Hi everybody, this is Stephen Lynch from Stephen Lynch Photography at photolynch.com. Today I wanted to show you how to create these beautiful looking layouts in Aperture 3. I came to the problem here trying to do this myself for this blog uh, that I did yesterday. The problem is that Apple really did not include any way to make layouts natively in Aperture 3 that is specific for making collage layouts. You think that would be something that they would really want to add into their program, but they did not. So there's a few backwards ways to do it that are talked about online, but I wanted to show you what way does not work and what way does work. Let's take it over to Aperture 3. I'm going to open up my projects here where I have my selected photos. So I'm going to go ahead and select the photos I want to use for my collage. I can take that one and we'll take uh, this one and we'll take this one here. <clears throat> this is a good uh, starting place. So what I'm going to do is go up to New and Light Table. Light Table makes sense. That sounds like something that you can lay out your photos. It has the little pictures here where you can shows shows different sized photos being laid out next to each other. So let's click on that. I'm going to call it uh, Blog Layout. Okay. So here's the interesting thing about Light Table. It's it's something that's really made for creative use. It's it doesn't appear to use any type of mathematics or numbers or any type of thing like that. So what you're really doing is is they've given you a place to lay out your photos and in a more creative organization type way, I guess. Um, I guess this works for some people, but not for others. For myself, it's okay, but um, I would prefer to be able to sort them through other ways as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lay these out. See, here's another problem with light table. It gives you the little guides and you can you know, adjust on your access is here, you know, line it up at the top line, line it up at the middle line, etc. But it takes a while. So I'm going to go over here to one I've already made and show you. This is what I have done with it. I can uh, go like this. But here's the problem with light table. There's nothing that says what resolution it is or what size it is or anything else that would be important information to know. I'm thinking what's happening is it's taking the entire full-size resolution image and it's placing it on there. And then any other images that are placed on there are downsized. Let me show you why I don't think this works. But first, this is how you would get this out of Light Table. There is no export feature in Light Table or in the Books feature or any others that makes a clear image. Now let's come over here to File print light table. This is the only way to do it guys. Uh, it's not very fun but um, this is how it has to be done in Aperture 3. It's also extremely buggy and slow. So we have to go to PDF and say PDF to Aperture. It works but again it's very slow. When I click this button it'll probably be sitting here for the next three minutes trying to do it or more. And I think that has to do with the resolution size of the images. Like I said it's taking that one picture, which is the biggest one here, and it's full size. This was shot on a 5D Mark II at 22 megapixels with a raw image. So that's a huge file compared to a JPEG at a very much smaller size. Let me go and show you the results that I've already done. I'm not going to sit there and, and go through that export process with the PDF for you. It takes way too long. Let me drop the filters, and we'll go to the end of the list. And here's the one from Light Table right here. <clears throat> Let me remove the inspector and we'll show you a full size image. It looks good, it does. But the problem is when we zoom in, this looks great over here. The full size one is beautiful, has no problems, it has great uh, detail in it. Take it over to the smaller ones. All of a sudden, you're seeing all of this over sharpening in the hairs, the beard, the clothes, um, everywhere. Again on this one, in the face, it's artifacts and noise and some kind of sharpening going on. It's just really, really weird and uh, it's got to have to, it must have to do with the actual uh, 
sizes of the photo is being downsized for light table. Now let me show you how you can go by, I'm going to set the filter back up. Let me show you how you can go by doing this the right way. So let's select the same images again. We've got these three here. And we're going to go to new and we're going to use the books feature. So I'm going to say new book. Books is a great feature in After 3. I don't use it because I don't do a lot of printing, but here it is. You can select different uh, books to make, and you can lay out your photos, you can add text, you can do all kinds of things. And you can actually send this off to a printer and have it printed for you. But the way to do layouts, you need to come up here to book type. You don't really want to use the standard one because they're full of different style pages and everything. Let's go over to custom. And I've already set up a few here, but what you need to do is select new theme. Um, actually, I'm going to title my book name, and I'm going to title it Blog Layout. And then we're going to go to New Theme, and the theme name will be Blog Layout. Now, you can select the page size. You will, don't want to use something too big because it will take a long time to send out a PDF. And if you're using it online, you really don't want to use anything too big anyways because it's not going to have much purpose online being huge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make it at 8 and 11, that's the default. Uh, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can make it 13 by 19, 11 by 14, whatever that you want it to be, you can make it. Now the image spacing right here, this is the border spacing between the images on the page. If it's zero, there's not going to be any spaces at all, and they're all going to be right next to each other. It's not very flattering, but to each their own, some people may like that. The margins, that controls how much white space or how much space is left on the edges of the between the pictures and the edge of the books. Now I'm going to set mine to 0.3 because I don't like that much space. And we're going to say OK. And we're going to come over here and say choose theme. All of a sudden we're left with all of these things which we can add stuff to. You can also click on it, a soft cover, you got these right here, and you can change what each page is going to be, whether it's going to be um, a text page or it's going to be these kind of layouts. It's pretty cool. You can't customize them more than they're already set up, it appears, but um, you really don't need to. I like doing the three up, I like doing the, the four up, and maybe sometimes the two up. Um, so what I'm going to do is come in here. And first, I'm going to select all of these because I only want to make one. And if you leave these in here, they will be exported as images when you export the PDF to Aperture. And they'll just be blank pages. So I'm going to go ahead and, and delete the 19 pages that we're not using. And then I'm going to go to this little arrow, drop it down, and say, OK, I want to do a 3-up. So now I'm going to populate it. It's so simple. You take it, you drag it, you drop it. Drag it, drop it, drag it, drop it. There you go. Very simple, very easy. You can manipulate it from that point around. You can do all kinds of things. But it's so easy, easy to drop, easy to drag. You can take the pictures. You can swap them. They just take each other's places. Very simple, very easy. And uh, I like doing this a lot. And it saves my time because I don't want to spend hours working on blog posts or these layouts to put in my blog. I want to do it quick. I don't have a whole lot of time to, to write things constantly, so I think it looks good, it works good. But again, we're going to have to deal with the exporting of the PDF to Aperture. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go over to the Print button, push Print. There is other options that you can do inside of your uh, book, like change the background color to black or different colors, and those work great, but we're not going to play with them right now. Go ahead, open your Aperture. Take a look at books and play with them, and uh, let me know what you think. Let's go over here and go Save PDF to Aperture. I'm going to click on it. This is the other problem with Aperture 3. It takes forever to do this, and forever and ever and ever, and it's just going to keep going. It'll probably last about two minutes in my past experience. That's if my Aperture 3 does not crash out on me, which it has done before, and I will go over here and check it right now. Nope, it's uh, app application not responding. And it will do this. Most likely it will come back, but it's going to sit here for a few minutes and not do anything. 
the status bar is not going to move. And let's jump the video ahead to where it works. Okay, and we're back. It looks like it just finished. As you can tell by my clock, it took at least a couple minutes. Um, now we're faced with this import PDF to Aperture a dialog box, and you want to add images to existing project and select whatever your project is. I believe it's Amanda is the one I'm using. You can go ahead and make this a, a TIFF or a PDF. I'm going to use JPEG um, to each their own again. I just want it to be simple and easy to put out of my blog and put into my library. But if you want it to be bigger, you can do that for printing purposes. Now I'm going to go to add the name format and current version name is what it's asking me. I'm going to go ahead and set up it a custom name and we'll call it the blog layout book so we can tell the difference. I'm going to go ahead and import that and we're going to go over to my project and I'm going to remove my filter and we'll take it to the end of the list again. All right, here we go. Here's our picture. Let's check it out full size. Looks good, looks good, come over here. Looks really good, come over here, looks really good. There's no over sharpening going on, there's none, none of the problems that we faced in the light table uh, feature. I don't know why this is happening, but thankfully it does work in books and it looks very good. Uh, my borders were set up pretty nicely. You can go ahead and crop it to whatever you're liking if you like. Just treat it just as you would a picture and that's how it's done. So I want to thank you all for joining me for this uh, overview of Aperture 3's layouts. Unfortunately, Apple does not support it natively as a feature, but you can do stuff with it and you can make these easily without having to make multiple, multiple files and go into Photoshop and play around with it for an hour trying to get it exactly the way you want it. So thanks for joining me. And come back again to photolynch.com for more of these fun videos. Thanks.